Practical transgenderism. What is it? What is practical transgenderism? It is a title I made up. <laughs> take it, take it for what it's worth. It's a title I made up, uh, and and I hope it, I hope it sticks. My mic on? Yeah, it is. Okay, so what is it? What, what's practical transgenderism? Why, why would I? Am I, am I seeking here to kind of clog the practical side of theology with, with, with the gunk? of new and innovative religion. Well, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to do that. I'm not trying to, to do that at all. What I want to do is I, I want to actually point out just how severe, um, the, the, the flipping over of trans, uh, of, of gender roles is in creation. Um, and, and at all, at almost every level. And so, Basically, what I mean by transgenderism, or practical transgenderism, is that in your practice, uh, men, many of you have begun to act and think like women, and women, in your practice, many of you, have begun to think and act like men. Um, and, and that's what I mean. That's, that's practical transgenderism. The problem, obviously, is that it's a reversal of the biblical order. It's a reversal of natural law. It, uh, you know, creation tells us uh, by itself that men are made one way, women are made another way, and they have different things that they're good at. <laughs> okay, to put it very basically. And so to, to reverse that is not only a, it's a violation of natural law, uh, but scripture is also very clear that these are ways that th this is just the way that God has made it. This is the way that God has made man and woman. He's created them to uh, take um, dominion of creation in specific uh, distinct ways. And that when we say there's gender roles, there are roles proper to each gender, respectively. That's what we mean. These are the capacities in which uh, man is to operate and woman is to operate in order to take dominion of this creation. That's the mandate. And um, this is seen probably most basically in Genesis 2, when before Eve, Eve even comes onto the scene... God is giving man, Adam, commandments. He's telling him, this is what you're here to do. Uh, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the positive commandment, right? That's the positive law. Don't eat the, don't eat the, he makes the covenant with Adam, and then Adam is expected to lead his wife in godliness after that. Because, because those instructions, again, those instructions come before Eve is even there. And then God creates Eve. And together, Eve, Eve as the helper, Adam as the head, they're to take dominion of creation. They're to become one flesh, which uh, most, uh, explicitly, most explicitly that's depicted in having children. You know, a child bears the DNA of both parents. Um, in that sense, they're the one flesh that's created from the two. Um, and, and they're, so they're to, to bear children and by means of that, by means of working, uh, to the glory of God, they're to take dominion over God's creation that he is, that he has entrusted us over. Now that be, sin has corrupted that. And what, what I'm, I want to point out, uh, by calling the reversal of gender roles, tr practical, tra a, a kind of practical transgenderism is is the sin that has corrupted that that's that's what i'm referring to it's the sin that has corrupted the this good order of creation this way that god has made us to function as men and women respectively and uh, so just historically thinking about how men have come to think of themselves as either equal to women in in role uh, and responsibility, or even subservient to them in role and responsibility. 
uh, over the years, and and women likewise. I mean, these are cons- people who would consider themselves as politically and uh, theologically conservative have even bought into this kind of reversal of the created order. Uh, you, you, even in, in, in seminaries, I know that there are seminarians, students, who are being provided for by their wives who are working them through seminary. And I know pastors who would say, if that's your case, if that's the case, if your wife is working you through seminary, you are never going to be a pastoral intern here unless, of course, you repent from that and change you know, your, your, your trajectory, the way in which you're, you're going. Switch it up. Do not sacrifice your family. Do not sacrifice, compromise God's word just so that you can get through seminary. Okay? Your wives are not meant to work you through anything, men. Okay, that's, that's, that's an example of the wife taking the role of a man and then a man taking the role of his wife. That's practical transgenderism. And it's even encouraged in some of our seminaries. Seminaries who have come out of the other side of the conservative resurgence positively with an orthodox doctrine of biblical authority and inerrancy and all of that are encouraging even allowing students, male students, uh, to, to, to go to school there, receive their education as their wife works them through it. When I believe the biblical response would be to say that if that's what you're going to have to do in order to get through seminary, you're just not ready for seminary. God has not put you in a place where you're able to get a seminary education. At this point, at least. When your your means improve or accumulate such that you are able to get a seminary education without putting your wife to work outside of the home uh, and, and, and thereby becoming your provider, then, then, you can, then you can come back and think about it then. But seminaries, large, for the large part, and, and, and you know, largely seminaries are not doing that, obviously. Um, that's practical transgenderism. And it, what it does is it flips the gender roles on, on their heads. What you're supposed to be as a man, you, you have traded that in in order to be like a woman. All, all, all full-fledged transgenderism does is it consistently follows that out and it says, well, since I'm a man who already thinks and acts like a woman, I, I just I want to become, I want to look like a woman now. Full-fledged transgenderism is just being consistent here. Now, okay, I'm not saying that the seminarian and the seminarian's wife, who has perhaps even ignorantly reversed the roles of creation, I'm not saying that that sin is just as equal as the full-fledged transgenderism over here. It's not, okay? It's not. But it is sin. It is a turning, uh, it, is a, it is a twisting of God's created order. And, and, and how God has designed you men to function in this creation and how God has designed women to function in this creation. Okay. And, and so practical transgenderism just is that it is that practical reversal of God's created order, especially in terms of gender roles and things like that. So when a man takes up the responsibility and roles of his wife and when a, uh, and when a wife takes up the respo- roles and responsibilities of her husband a practical kind of transgenderism is occurring where they're, where they're actually trading in some of the roles which are inherent in their gender for roles that are inherent in another gender okay these aren't just roles these aren't just and look gender roles are not just things that 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 are added to creation after the fact this is woven through the fabric of creation it's not as if god created man and woman 
and then uh, and then on top of that creation gave positive laws for gender roles. No, this is natural. This is creation has been created in this way. Now that is brought to the fore and clarified in the scriptures and, and, and our misunderstandings of it is because of sin is clarified and corrected in the scriptures. But this is, make no mistake about it, this is in the very fabric, the framework of creation itself. You don't need the Bible to tell you that this is how it should be. Men are obviously made for different reasons, for different purposes, for different roles than women are made. This is something you can look around at nature and see. And the sick and disgusting sin of a full-fledged transgenderism is that they are flipping the created order on its head. And they're essentially saying, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. I say what I am. God has nothing to do with saying what I am or, or what I should be. And practically, we're doing the same thing even within our churches and seminaries when we say that, man, it's okay for you to think and act like a woman, and woman, it's okay for you to think and act like a man. We're flipping the created order on its head. It's a practical kind of transgenderism. So, you know, maybe you don't like the nomenclature, you don't like the name that I've given to that. Maybe it's a little too extreme, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is that we've been doing that for a very long time, and it's sinful. And there's no question as to whether or not it's sinful. And churches, conferences, seminaries, they're not addressing it. They don't want to address it. Now, I do appreciate a Midwestern, uh, you know, uh, Owen Strayan's work, especially on biblical manhood and womanhood, has been extremely effective, I believe, especially within the student body there at, at Midwestern. But we need to go further in our practice. Seminaries, you need to, you need to tell men who come, who, who, who think they are going to go through seminary while their wife works them through seminary. You need to tell them that you that, that the spiritually responsible thing to do as a seminary full of supposedly godly and knowledgeable professors is to say, young man, you're not ready for this yet. You're not in a position where, where, where you're able to do this in a God-honoring way yet. So let's put it off. Let's come back and talk. Let's come back to the table in a year or two, and maybe your situation has changed such that now uh, you're able to come to seminary, or then, you know, uh, you know. But seminaries aren't going to do that because what that means is is that they they they'll miss out on some tuition. It comes down to money. This is a biblical issue. It's a gospel issue. We don't, uh, we, we shouldn't, as Christians, we should not encourage or allow for the practical turning, uh, twisting of God's created order. And that's why I called it practical transgenderism, just because I, I kind of want it to be provocative. I mean, it is. It, that's what it is. You're, 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 in practice, you're acting like a different gender. You're acting like the opposite sex. And so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practical transgenderism, and I want it to be called what it is. And it's very, it's serious. Is it as serious as a full-fledged transgender? No, it's not. Because it's still at a stage where it's manageable, it's correctable, pastorally, within, within the walls of the church, within our seminaries. And if you're going to have a conference, talk about it. Don't just sweep it under the rug and act like it's okay, but you know, chalk it up to Christian liberty. It's not it's not it, we can't chalk this up to Christian liberty. This is not a this is not an issue of liberty. The Christian is not at liberty to adopt the role of his wife. The roles and responsibilities of his wife. A Christian woman is not at liberty to adopt the roles and responsibilities of her husband. Seminaries that claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ should not allow for such a thing. Churches should not allow for such a thing and should in the most pastoral manner possible 
correct these issues, both from the pulpit and in personal counseling situations. Anyway, guys, I, I, I hope this, uh, I hope this video has been helpful. If you're listening, uh, you know, share the Spotify link. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're watching after you click subscribe down here, after you click subscribe, uh, please give us a share. God bless you guys. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day.